Hey everyone, Matt Bailey here from Rochester, New York with my dog Diesel. You are watching TJV on YouTube. Enjoy. <laughs> How you doing? Tell the good people. Tell them. You're too close, man. Too close. How you doing? Is that your good side? Good morning. How you doing today? Today's a new day. Did you know that? The truck's running. We got a load behind us. It's gonna be a good day. Good morning, you fine people. You. All of you fine people, every single one of you. It's gonna be a good day today. We're in, where are we? Oh yeah, Weyburn. Gotta think for a minute, I just woke up. Weyburn, Saskatchewan, Canada. And tonight we're gonna be in Calgary, Alberta, which is that way. First we gotta walk the weasel. We've already done the pre-trip, we're all good to go. It's a little bit rainy today, but that's better than snowy. It's gonna be a good day. Did I say that yet? It's gonna be a good day. What's going on, man? All right, bud. There you go. It's a little bit muddy out here. It wasn't this muddy last night, but it was colder last night. Hey, Diesel, don't track that. Don't track that into the truck, okay? Don't. Oh man, I should have known this was going to be muddy when it warmed up. Soak in the nice, cool, crisp Canadian air. I could almost call it Canadian spring air. Almost. We're just about there, folks. We just about made it through another winter. Spring is on the way. I can feel it. Feel it in my bones. Diesel, don't go in the water, man. What are you doing? Yeah, turn around. That's a better plan. Oh, it feels so nice. It feels so nice. I'm so excited for summer. I mean, I'll be working most of summer, but we're hoping we can uh, do something special for our anniversary, my wife and I, in September. And if we work really hard and catch up from this uh, shop bill that we had, shouldn't be a problem. We work really hard until then. We should be able to make something special happen then. I'm excited about it. I'm not going to say anything yet because uh, nothing's set in stone. But uh, we have desires. We want to do something special. So we'll see what happens. Let's see if I can make enough money through the spring and summer first. You gotta work really hard for a really long time so you can have just a little bit of fun. Life, it's the way it works. So underneath this tarp, it's a load of glass that's going to Calgary, wrapped up like a Christmas present or a birthday present. Doesn't really matter. It's wrapped up nonetheless. They're counting on us to get it safe and clean to Calgary from Minnesota. We're over halfway there. Filled up the washer fluid. We are ready to rock. Got myself coffee inside there. Let's get out of here. To Calgary.
we've got our nose pointed straight into the wind again. It's always hit or miss going across the prairies. You're either going against the wind or you got the wind pushing you. Usually you're going against wind. It, it, it just seems that way to me. But now we're going against wind. I bet you anything when we pick up our load of lumber tomorrow and we start headed back east, we'll be going against wind again. <laughs> It comes from all angles, I don't know. One thing you can count on though, on the prairies here, is the wind. It is always windy. The wind and air never just sits still. It's always windy and as you can see, it's self-explanatory. Like there's nothing to stop it. It just, it has to go. Wide open skies here, flat lands, so obviously you're gonna get wind. One thing you can count on. When it works with you, it really helps you a lot because it practically pushes you, right? You can just sail along with the wind. When you're going against wind, this load I have behind me is like one giant parachute. It grabs all the wind it can and drags me down. This is sort of why I wanted them to uh, load it further to the front of my trailer so that less wind would be caught by it when it goes around my truck. But I probably would have been overweight on my drives then. So this is the way we had to load it up. And now the wind sort of like cuts around my truck. And the truck, they, they designed these trucks pretty aerodynamic. You can slice through the wind pretty well. But it goes around the back of my truck, comes back together behind my sleeper and slams into my load. And my load is, it's like, pulling a wall behind you, it's pulling a brick wall behind you, or a parachute. Takes a lot more energy. But hopefully, I mean, we're coming up to the Trans-Canada Highway here. We're sort of headed northwest at the moment, and once we hit the Trans-Canada, we'll be headed straight west for the most part. We'll stop at Moose Jaw for a shower at the Flying J. But, uh, Hopefully we'll catch a break and uh, the wind will die down a little bit, start working in our favor. For the most part, the wind is always coming out of the west on the prairies. That's where the wind comes from. It goes over the Rocky Mountains and then shoots west towards Manitoba. That's why on the prairies, if you want to know what the weather's going to be like later that day or the next day, just look to the western horizon. That weather is coming towards you, most likely. That's how I tell the weather. I don't need a weather forecast from Manitoba. All I do is look west. Yeah. It looks like they're getting rain out west. Well, we're getting rain later. I can't tell you when it'll get here, but I'll tell you it'll get here. We made it to Moose Jaw, and we were greeted with an even stronger wind in our face. So that's all right, we'll deal with it. For now, we're gonna go into Flying J here and grab a shower, clean ourselves up a little bit. Hopefully I don't have to scrounge for parking. It's a very small lot. Right. They converted this Flying J from uh, an older truck stop and it's not big enough for the volume of business that Flying J brings. Like if you build a Flying J, you're gonna have a lot of trucks and a lot of business, you gotta have a big lot. And this is just very small. Uh, looks like there's parking here right now. It's the middle of the day. There should be parking. Oh, yeah, we shouldn't have a problem. In one kilometer, turn left on 9th Avenue. Plenty. So I'm gonna quickly do a quick U-turn here, swing around, and back in. Hopefully, this guy coming in behind me doesn't get in my way. I'm gonna try to do this quickly. Yeah, he's gonna get in my way. It's pretty obvious what I was planning to do there, man. That was pretty, pretty obvious what I was doing there, my friend. Looking at me like, oh, what are you doing? I'm parking. What, what, do, what, what, do, you, what do you think? I'm just doing, no, I just came in here just to do circles. <laughs> okay. This, that's what I mean, this lot is just too small. Alberta, you need to change your flags. 
This is a bit disgraceful. We're at the Welcome to Alberta sign at the Saskatchewan border on Trans-Canada. Look at those flags. That's embarrassing. It's less than half left. Shame. Somebody call somebody up in the government there. I know one of you has a connection. Somebody, some, somebody, call somebody, tell them to go switch those flags. That looks terrible. So we are in Alberta. Officially, thank God. Saskatchewan, your cell service and your cell reception is getting worse. So we have another 341 kilometers to go, three and a half hours, probably four at the speed I'm going. We've been fighting this wind all day. It's gotten a little better now at the Alberta border, but man, it's just been brutal. Twice as much fuel as yesterday. Twice as much. You're killing my, my, my fuel economy here. Come on. Somebody tell them to turn those big windmills off, you know? Big giant fans. Exit 247, Glenmore TR, Shopping Center. Apparently we gotta make a left turn right away. We're in Calgary. Calgary. I say Calgary. I think the correct way to say it is Calgary. But you get some Canadians out there who will call it Calgary. I don't know why. Calgary. Where's the Glenmore Trail? That's where we gotta turn. This guy has been following me for a very long time. I wonder if he watches my video, if he knows me or something. Every turn I make, he makes. He stays right behind me. Glenmore TR, Shopping Center, and then keep to the left at 770 meters. Well, we'll see how far he how far he falls, man. I'm not gonna I'm gonna go park by the customer because I gotta be there at 7 a.m. and I've gotta try to uh, get unloaded as early as possible. Exit 247, Glenmore TR, Shopping Center, and then. Oh my care, you like to talk. Jeez. Wow. It's too late for that. So uh, 7 a.m. is the appointment, but these guys like to take a long time. They like to drag their feet unloading me. They, they take longer than anyone else. You guys following me again? All right, we'll see, if we, see how far he follows me. But, uh... 600 meters. Oh, okay. Kick to the left on. Heritage Meadows Road in that. Turn right at 730 meters. Got anything else to say? Probably. Sure. But uh, yeah, so we want to get them started unloading as early as possible. So I got to try to get out of there by around noon at the latest so that I can get to my reload because I have to be at my reload in Sundra, Alberta, which is about an hour. What she said, just stay right after this. See, when I need you to talk, you don't talk. When I don't need you to talk, that's when you talk the most. In 600 meters, turn right on Heritage Drive and then take the entrance to the left in 540 meters. Okay. Anyways, like I was saying, I, I want to get them started as early as possible. I want to be there for them right at 7 uh, so that I can get up to Sundra and get loaded tomorrow. Because if I don't get there by 2 or 2.30, they're right not going to load me. Heritage Drive and then take the entrance to the left in 540 meters. And then I got to wait a whole other day and then I get home a day later. And I'll still have to leave the same at the same time, so that means that that time that I'm spending in the truck, I could have spent at home, you know. Are you coming through? No, you're stopping. Okay. Guy's still behind me. Yeah, I'm gonna go park by the customer on the street. Take the entrance to the left on Glenmore Trail West. Entrance on the left? In 300 meters, what? take the entrance to the left on Glenmore Trail West. Okay. Get in this lane then. It's confusing. Karen, you better be leading me to the right place. I already Google Earthed it. And I found a spot where I'll be able to park for the night. Is that guy still following me? Yep. Okay. What 
road is this now? McCloy Trail? All right. In three kilometers, take McLeod Trail, shopping center, city center. I'm still coming over. I'm still coming over. You guys are behind me. I don't know why you gotta cut in. My lane ends. Okay, he's passing me now, so he wasn't following me. Okay. This was the guy who I thought might follow me. Good. Don't weird me out. <laughs> going past Chinook Center here off on the left, if you're familiar with Calgary. In three kilometers, turn right on 34 Avenue. The industrial zone we're delivering to, or commercial zone, whatever you want to call it, is a little ways up ahead. I didn't want to deal with rush hour in the morning. And like I said, I want to be there first thing. And there's plenty of parking on the streets around there. And meh, I decided I'd park over there. Calgary's a safe city. You don't got to worry about much. Oh, somebody got a photo radar ticket. Ha <laughs> ha, it sucks. For them, you see that? Something flashed. It wasn't me, was it? No. Wouldn't be me, I wasn't doing anything wrong. Where's the camera? Somebody ran a red. I don't see the camera anywhere though. Huh. Well, I found a spot on the street, just around the corner from where I'm unloading in the morning. So, uh, hopefully this will be quick. The last couple of times, I think I've delivered here twice now. This is my third time and each of my other times it's taken them the full day to unload my trailer. Now, just for a comparison, I haul these loads to different places too. And I've never had it take longer than like four hours max on a very complicated full load. This is a pretty simple load. There's just two bundles. I think there's like five or six crates in each bundle. So maybe like 12 crates, let's say. Six in each bundle, I think. I think I have 12 crates for them. That's all they gotta unload. 12 equal sized crates of glass. So it's, it's glass, you gotta be careful. But uh, that shouldn't take more than a couple of hours. We'll see how long it takes them tomorrow. I really wanna get reloaded tomorrow as well so that I can start heading home. I'd really like to have that extra time at home. That's uh, the story of every trucker, right? And the only reason I get to go home is because like I've explained before, my house, our property where we live, is right on my main routes. I go back and forth and back and forth between like the American Midwest and Western Canada. And each trip pretty much takes me right past the house. So if I want to stop in, if I have time to stop in, I can just swing on in and stop at home. So just like this, I don't have to have this lumber load I'm picking up here delivered in Wisconsin until next Tuesday or Wednesday. And if I would go straight there, I'd be there on like Saturday or Sunday. So I have a few extra days. They don't want the lumber any earlier. They can't unload it. They don't have space or room for it, right? But we're picking it up. So I'm going to pick it up, go and drop it in a secure yard, and then go home for a couple of days. It works out perfect for me that way. So it's, it's not really like I'm getting a lot of home time. I, I see the comments where everyone's like, wow, you got a lot of home time. No, I'm just in a very convenient location. So <laughs> it just turns out instead of just sitting in my truck for a couple of days, why not go sit in my house for a couple of days with my wife? You know, we're trying to have a baby right now. So it, the more I'm there, the higher the chances are. All right. <laughs> Anyways, no news on that front yet. But I do have some news on another front. We are going to bed. I'm going to read my book a little bit and hit the sack. We'll see you right here in the morning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. If you did like the video, don't lie. Don't lie. If you didn't like it, you give it the thumbs down, all right? I want the truth. Trust you. <laughs>